Every child learns to count, but not everyone becomes an accountant. Every child is taught to read and write, but not everyone becomes a writer. In the same way, while not every child will end up being a computer scientist, a software engineer, developer or coder, coding is a fundamental skill for the 21st century. The role of teachers and the role of people like us is to make sure we equip them for this new wave that's coming so they don't get bypassed like the rest of us were bypassed. And so equipping them is just as important as the way we teach our kids French, German. We teach them how to swim, how to ride a bicycle. The technology side is as important for them into the future as it is. Anne Mwangi, a thermodynamics engineer, encountered this reality when she went to study engineering at the Technical University in Berlin. Not only did she have to learn the German language, she also had to play catch-up and learn the coding language C++ so as to undertake parts of her coursework. In my experience with computers before then was just the basic things that people learn after they've finished high school, which was the, the packages, the you know Windows packages, and that, that was the extent of my knowledge as far as computers went. But then when we started out at the, at the university, we were required to write uh, algorithms that calculate really large sums. And that was, for me, something completely new, but something that I found that my international count counterparts were very, very good in. And so that was uh, challenging for me because I, I was in a completely new area and a new situation. According to Anne, who founded a solar energy company, although she does not use coding in her career, exposure to it gave her a valuable soft skills that she uses daily. She's now a passionate advocate of teaching coding in Kenya from an early age. There's a certain way of looking at problems that you get after you've experienced coding. It gave me a new perspective on how to look at situations and at new problems and how to um, approach different situations. Code is a list of step-by-step -step instructions that get computers to do what you want them to do. Coding skills refer to the use of various programming languages to write commands instructing a computer, application or software programs about the actions it must perform and how to perform them. Why do we code to solve a problem? and problems are in different sectors of um, society. But even before we talk about why code, let's take a step back first. When we code, it's because we've identified a problem. So this need to teach learners from a young age about solving problems. Teach them about questioning so that you refine the problem. Teach learners about so this problem, what is it, is it viable? What are the use cases? Teach them also on critical thinking. <coughs> then the end result is coding. To ensure Kenya is not left behind in the ongoing technological revolution, the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development, KICD, has approved a program for teaching coding in schools, which is now in the rollout stages in the country. If you look at India, and how they took advantage of the digital revolution. They developed knowledge workers and they were very deliberate in terms of instilling it from a schooling perspective. It is no wonder that today, the CEO of Google, CEO of Microsoft, are from India. The competency-based curriculum, CBC, has also a digital literacy component. However, the challenge being faced across the country is one of access to resources. The challenge, therefore, is for government and uh, non-government actors to come in and help those schools which are struggling. Like uh, UNICEF is having a great program called the GIGA uh, program that is reaching out to all these rural uh, spaces where children can't access internet, they have a challenge of devices, and they are providing those solutions. But we can't put up an argument and say that since these children are in places where having devices or accessing internet is a challenge, then let's remove it from the curriculum. If you remove it from the curriculum, they will never have another chance to acquire these, these competences. 
this is basically the, the future of technology and I think that if Kenya as a country generally is serious about um, competing with our international counterparts, then I believe that coding should be a mandatory subject and I believe that the government should facilitate for every student in the country to be able to learn coding because uh, this is where we're heading, this is, this is just the future of, of technology and we might find ourselves not too far into the future that the only employable people are the people who can code. The generation of children in Kenya are complete digital natives. It is not uncommon for a two-year-old to unlock their parents' phone so as to play games. Question then is how to channel their raw skills and to turn them from being mere consumers to producers of the apps. And I've gone to a couple of schools and I've sat in some of their classes and there's some kids who are really gifted and they even mess around with, with your spreadsheets, you know, and, and perhaps even get into the Zoom meetings. They're gifted. And the thing is, you know, the skill they have should be encouraged. What you should focus more is on the values they need to exhibit online. But the skill they have, divert it to something useful. As a parent, I have a nine-year-old who's uh, doing coding. And probably the reason why I pushed her to do coding was she used to love playing games. So instead of her playing games, I wanted her to learn how the games were made and for her to be able to uh, actually attempt to do an app or a gaming app that she likes. Even as parents encourage their children to become digitally literate, there's need for vigilance as the World Wide Web is aching to the wild, wild west with predators and danger looming. There are numerous apps like Family Safety or Family Link that help ensure children's safety online and also regulate their time spent on gadgets. I encounter so many parents who try to keep technology away from their children because it has a negative influence and I always tell them that there are child lock apps that you can use and they only have access to the learning materials. Codris Africa, an education technologies firm, is the provider of the government approved program for teaching coding. Through a partnership with Safaricom, the telco's customers can conveniently access the Codris mini app through the M-Pesa super app and purchase licenses for the app. This is an imperative skill for success in any entity. As we continue to strive to innovate and realize our vision of transforming lives and our mission of changing from a telco organization, which we are now, to a tech co-organization by the year 2025, we would need such thought leaders to steer our way forward. Coding skills can be an entry point to different tech careers and also come in handy in a variety of careers as the world has gone digital, a trend that has been speeded up by COVID. I think it's important for teachers to mention this to learners. There are so many other verticals. For example, you can go to cybersecurity. Now there's need for artificial intelligence, machine learning engineers, data science, infrastructure, the folks who enable us to connect um, wireless. So it's also important to introduce learners to the broad spectra of various careers that are available from a software from a technology perspective. Otherwise, you'll have a doctor who will have a complex machine to operate or wants to build an artificial intelligence way and he can't. So he's a traditional doctor. All right, you'll have an, an architect who can't use Archicad, a software de developed to build buildings. So it's not just you'll end up being a, a developer or a programmer like Jack, but it's also relevant for whatever profession you will do if you're a teacher. You will need to be able to build your curriculum, maybe build a nice software to mark attendance. You know, basic things, like you would ride a bicycle. For years, Kenya has been dubbed the Silicon Savannah. Recently, a host of companies such as Microsoft, Google and Amazon Web Services have set up shop in Kenya. This has ignited a war for talent as the demand for software developers has increased. Ultimately, corporates have lost a number of IT professionals who are laughing all the way to the bank. So the shortage in Kenya is such that one tertiary coding school is training high school graduates to code in six months only. And at that entry level, 
of the craft. They are ready um, landing jobs as fast as they leave that institution. So the market is ready. Kenya is ripe for teaching coding in primary and secondary schools and delivering these learners to a skill that opens up the modern world to them. For Kenyan corporates, the solution is to increase the resource pool in the ecosystem by training and certifying a huge number of IT professionals. This is envisioned to be done internally and also in partnership with the Kenyan Academia with firms like Codris Africa. Most coding camps last three to four months and teach enough coding skills to qualify graduates for entry-level coding jobs. It typically takes six to 12 months to learn how to code on your own.